when I started going through the before I actually represented Janice, she brought me a copy of her transcript, or we got it through. You just lay that down right there. And and I want to say, well, I was appalled because the claim was denied, but there wasn't anything mentioned about all of his exposure hauling the material into the plant at Honeywell, which is one of the most toxic, radioactively contaminated sites on Earth. And that's what this law firm has finally come forward with. We know where the samples of plutonium are in the plant. Now, they want me to show them, but, but wait a minute. I'm looking into an audience, and I'm looking into the eyes of other workers. And why in the world are we going to hand over all of our evidence to somebody after they decided they weren't going to help the workers? Fair enough? And we're either going to be on one, they're either going to help one and all, all of us or nobody. I don't need them. So that's why when I meet with them, I've got a great lawyer. His name, I've already told you, Mick Harrison. And he, and I'm, listen, I'm Dutch. Merritt Lake's getting ready to talk here sooner. We, we used to play basketball together, and we, we fought hard on the basketball court. Well, and so I want, I want to tell you, we're going to continue to fight, but I, I have to do the heavy lifting for all of them. And you know what that means. Don't go down this trail on your own, because it takes a support team to bring this whole thing to conclusion. We know by looking at, and Merritt, you weren't here this morning, we had eight politicians, or six or eight, right here. I invited another 15 on the Republican Party side. So 10 years ago, with Gatewood Galbraith standing right there, the same thing happened. He was the only governor candidate that showed up, and nobody else would show up. So what we had done is put Mitch McConnell and all the pictures over there, not a, one of them showed up. But this time I did even better. I went into the county meeting on Monday night. George was there, and I invited every one of them. Not one of them showed up, with the exception of a politician that we knew if you didn't show up, you had to be a Republican. Well, not a one of them showed up. So we, we're now moving to eliminate, and don't think I can't do it with your help, your voters. You remove them. And Ronaldo Henderson was here this morning, and if anybody in this community votes for anybody but him in the city, shame on you. And I'm gonna tell you, Calvin, Calvin Cole, Jr., a 26-year veteran, or 27-year veteran at the PVA, give me a break. I don't care if Bevins flies in here on a Learjet and nominates uh, his cousin. You don't take over this country by saying we're the kings, we're the Republicans, we're the Democrats even. And kid telling the telling the community and the citizens you don't mean anything. And I will say I, I did it all week. I kind of look at us as the 95 percenters. Not because we're 95 percenters, we're Democrat or Republican, but we're 95 percenters because we know what's right or wrong. Okay? I gotta stop that okay too. Buddy. So yeah. We're here. My question to you, I'm going to put you on the spot in front of all these people. Do it. Is out of all the percentage of the, the uh, applicants that you have um, coming to these town hall meetings and so forth, um, we tell in our story, we, we, you know, you go and you say, well, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. What percentage of the claimants have, have been compensated? Did you say, did you, did I misunderstand? Did you say, who, who did you want me to ask has been percentage? I'm asking you, what is the percentage of the claimants that have come to you have been compensated for uh, the uh, I'm going to tell you, that's one of their secrets. I can tell you what I learned here recently, and I brought it up earlier, and you might not have picked it up. I've got a lady that Vina knows has been, has been advertised as the, the, you know, the nuclear worker's gift to the world. She's got an area where they're they're paying in New York 45, uh, well, no, 56% of the claims. Here in Paducah, I would I've already estimated that barely 10% might are being compensated. So where in the world are these people? What are they doing to not compensate people 
And, and let me give you a little bit of a legal issue here, a little legal training. The law is the top of the land. So let's just say the law is at the scene, the actual statute. The next step down from that, on that next rung right there, let's say that level, is the regulations. The Supreme Court of the United States has said nothing that you do afterwards, the policies, procedures, emails, circulars under the EOICPA will be allowed to trump the regulations and if you try to do that, the law trumps the regu the, the statutes trump the regulations. The Lucero versus OWCP last August, I think August 2016. Now what we're looking at here is just what happened in Purdue. We just had a precedent setting case. To answer your question, my God, I'd like to know myself, but they won't tell us. Right, Rhonda? It should be, it should be on the DOE's website. Oh, well, oh, but you just said something. It should be on the DOE website. I haven't checked it for a while. Have you, do you know how to get the accurate information off of a DOE website? It doesn't exist. So don't be fooled by DOE, DOL, DOJ, FBI, and all the rest of them, and cohort patrons, by the way. They're all working together, so they're not here to tell you the truth. You understand? So what I'm telling you is, my, I'll venture a guess. Until they step up and I'm pulling them out, we're gonna say that from what I'm seeing, only 10 and maybe a maximum of 20% are paid. And they're not paid because they're eligible. Because I can tell you for a fact, when my uncle, John Career, got paid, he never even went to plant. He was only there two weeks. But he got paid for pancreatic cancer, and you got denied. Now, I will say I can't yet determine, except Stan Jones and a few other people, Rhonda Bradford, and many, I got to get you in here, many. We were all in the same room, and we found out shockingly, uh, Cameron Brewer, we found out shockingly that our black claimants, and you were, and the black claimants were, their claim records were being spoliated. And spoliation of your records is illegal. But does that mean since it's illegal, we're not going to see any president, even Donald Trump do? The trick is catching him, spoliating your records, and the people that did it, and they're sitting right out at the plant right now, and let me tell you who they are, because I'm not here to hide anything. Your Paducah DOE site manager is a former accountant for environmental management under Jimmy Massey, right, right George? Because we work together at the plant. Jennifer Woodard is your site manager. Buzz City Manager Smith, I mean City Commissioner Smith, moved from the city, transferred to the plant so he could help them cover up their secrets. Buzz Smith, let me say it one more time. Jennifer Wooder, one more time. Those are the people, Janice, when you mentioned your records, they couldn't find them, we've got a surprise for all of you. They were destroying your records. Now, right now, there's not a thing that I can say that I, I never would ever do anything to bring a clash on a racial issue. But when you've got my, when I've got my friends, and Stan and you were, up, you all were in the room, when my friends said, "Well, I didn't get my records. I didn't get this. I didn't get that," and I start listening to the pattern, and I want to tell you, Cameron Brewer's not here, and I don't really want him on camera because when he stepped up, they told him he didn't have any records. Oh. He's working right beside Steve Davis. Remember him? Hobart Barfield in the Alberici project. And I'm sitting there thinking, now how stupid are these people? And I mean, remember what I said this morning? You haven't lived until you found something to die for, Martin Luther King? I, I don't care. We're not, there's no black and there's no, there's no color here. But I just saw something that makes me matter than all. Because if they're sent, if they're singling out David Houston, because I represent him, you, because I represent him, and destroying your records, you're gonna get more than any $150,000, okay? 
That's spoliation of evidence and just Google a Republican. Trey Gowdy. The question that she's asking. What percentage do you have you had success? That's what she's asking. Success is for us. I want to contest. Well, hold on. I remember. We have successes that also go into the Part E because they steal your medical card. So when you ask me to mix and mix them, even on DOE website, they only list Part B, Janice, and only list Part E. We've got more than I, I can't give you the. I can't give you 20 out of 500, but I can tell you right now, in 19, oh, 2014, somebody nominated me for the Kentucky Justice Association Award because I've overturned more claims across the country than anybody. But where are the where are the claimants that have been compensated? That have been that have came to you uh, to assist them with getting their uh, compensation? What where are they at? What what are those numbers? You know, maybe okay, maybe one percent, maybe. Uh, I would say I would you know. say maybe twenty percent of ours are getting paid. But it's not because what we're trying, what we do, is we battle with them. Now, Nora, stand up. Tell her what we did for you. He has gotten uh, for the compensation of my husband two checks. And it was that, a war. No, it and was that, a war. that doesn't even cover the cancer that was all over his body. Because he had bone cancer everywhere. They said, Janice, listen to this. Gotta be real careful because we do legal strategy too. And there was an attorney up here this morning, if you remember? And she knew what I was talking about when I said, you don't, all you need to do is pull out one of your tape recorders, keep them in your purse. You don't have one, you don't have anything that'll win in court. Merrick, you probably know that too. What I'm telling you is, it took a war, and it really takes me to go in and and Monica and 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 we're we're trying to get this meeting set up. And, and the very first thing that that Greg Lanie said, "Have you got your claimants that will come down here and and those things would be great for them to stand up." That's going to answer your question. As we get a thousand claimants, I'm going to have to put more people like the resource center doesn't want me to do to develop the claim. Once we develop the claim, they're targeting me and you because they think I won't take them into federal court and appeal your claim. So that's one thing to be in Illinois. Your case has got a legal issue about it. Your husband worked there, your husband died there, and if he died there and they had plutonium, let me tell you as a as a attorney in fact but not as a real attorney i'm a consulting engineer and by the way i didn't like to be called an attorney and everybody thinks i am so it's the old adage you can't by the way only trust the attorneys that demonstrate they're working for you and they're not a soul now let me tell you something board you, you change it we've got something for you that cannot be divulged in this, in this, well, I'll slip it, in this courtroom. No, it's not a courtroom, it's a town hall meeting. And all I can say is your husband is going to get party. Now that's gonna, when that goes out, there, you can't turn to me and say, how you gonna do? Because in our meeting with the Honeywell workers, Howard Cook, Stanley, you were there. Did I jump out there and tell you all the detail how I'm gonna do it or did I tell Lorenzo Goody that's kind of, I can't tell anybody about it because it's got to be secret. If I put it in the newspaper, guess what? You might as well put it all the way up to Mitch McConnell and he'll start fighting you and you'll, 10 years from now you won't see it, okay? So all I can tell you is, it's sort of like they did us at the plant, and Merrick, you know this, and all of you from the plant. It's on a need to know basis because all I'm gonna tell you is we're working like a hornet and it involves something in Illinois. But guess what? All these all of these Illinois workers right now are sitting here and they don't get Part E for breathing the same chemical that Merritt and I breathe. Now Merritt's got different illnesses from what I've got. 
and I'm not happy from what I've got. I don't know. I don't know how Merritt has lived his life now, but we used to play basketball in 70, 1972 together, and I knew what Merritt did. His next door neighbor, we're all best friends. Do you smoke, Merritt? You look at me. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. I've got something bad in my lungs. I'm at claimant number 100. Now, Evelyn Jeffries, stand up and tell everybody how Mitch McConnell has helped you and how the mayor and all of them hung up on you. Stand up and say it. Stand up right now because the other night she got up in front of the camera at the courthouse and she said, I'm 99 years old, right? 89. 89? Yeah. The judge yeah, 10 years. 80, okay. 89. Well, let's say she's 68. She's oh, my life there. But let me tell you, the one thing that she was so nervous about, bless her heart, because I was shocked that we even got to speak, Janice. Because for four weeks in a row, Ronnie Roundtree, who's now probably had to leave, Ronnie was with us one night, and they said, we're not going to give you your right to speak. And I don't know how many people in this room have forgotten the Constitution, but you can't pass a law in Kentucky that neutralizes your right to speak. It's called the 14th Amendment. <clears throat> you shall pass no law that interferes with your First Amendment. But they did. So we let them do it. And then Evelyn Jeffers steps up and she was so surprised she got to speak. <laughs> He couldn't remember what to say, Janice. So I got up and said, there, late, there stands a lady that Judge Russell had just ruled on another case. It's a national precedent. They even, DOL even told Judge Russell, indirectly, I don't care what that judge ruled, we're not going to follow the judge in, in Western Kentucky Federal Court, Judge Thomas B. Russell. Now the good part of that, you say, oh, that's outrageous. Well, the good part about there stands the lady and her son. Yeah, well, that won't mean you have to stand all day. But her husband was my dad's guard, and my dad approved his security and the whole program as the chief of the guard force for F.H. McGraw. Now, there's somebody asked me about F.H. McGraw. Well, we're going to get you there. But Janice, her claim is linked to another claim that just got approved. Your claim is going to piggyback. When the door when the door opens for your for this other claim, guess who I've got lined up to push right through the door ahead of me? By the way, I hope you can knock them down. You, you get the first punch. Mm. So there is the reason I don't want to telegraph what we're getting ready to do, and I want to tell you, Bina knows a little bit about it. NWA members have already sat down with it. The NWA has already got the plan. It involves, if this works, we're moving to Portsmouth, Vina. If it works there, there's nothing they can do to stop paying the, for Part E under the Act for the illnesses. Did you say that she didn't her husband's records or prove that he worked there? No, no, we got it. We, 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 we finally got it. We finally, yeah, we finally got well now wait a minute. Up. We finally got what we think is all right. And you have somebody that you know that works with you who get affidavits from that person saying that you work. Well, no, no, no. no. Well, like I said, my case is entirely yeah. different from you all's cases uh, because my husband was a truck driver. He was they say truck drivers are vendors. He, yeah, he was subcontracted crap. through a trucking company to transport. And they say business. they're not qualified. Yeah, well, not let me that. tell you about a contractor down in Portsmouth. Uh, Boone Homes Construction. Seventeen workers. They had a trucking company, and they went in and they hauled stuff for the plant. Why they were hauling stuff for the plant, um, that the plant people were suited up. These truck drivers were not suited up. Why they were loading their trucks with radioactive material. Now, now, we, we're getting into something that could slip out, and I don't want to go there whenever I told you to fly. Because there's something. I'll speak to you. Well, you talk together privately yeah, because I'll here's what's going to happen, Janet. I understand. We've got to be careful because I ain't telling even the attorneys unless I know them. 
these attorneys don't get what, well actually I'm well, the you one thought that, you knew them, didn't you? I thought I did. <laughs> and by the way, it just proved when you bring you wait two years for a law firm to finally come in. Never always wait one more month, okay? <laughs> now I want to tell you we've got something that I will say set down with you but I can't give you the legal strategy. And that's what I'm trying to get Stuart Smith, who's the big dog behind this thing. But he's an arrogant big dog, and every one of his team members call him a SOB. I won't say the word. Mm -hmm. So we can be an SOB too. And by the way, he says it wasn't his first rodeo. Well, Jason Berry can't be here. Many of you have been interviewed by Jason. And he, Jason had a chance to talk to Mr. Stewart, who's a billionaire attorney. And Jason said, quote, Apparently it wasn't Gary's first radio either, a rodeo. Mm -hmm. Now I'm saying that because you don't want to trust an attorney and don't get caught up in shooting all this stuff out into the open because you will shoot yourself in the foot because they will take your information and run to DOE and the resource center and sell it to them. Well, you have my number. I'll wait for your call. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> and buddy, she will wait too, I tell you. She's right. Uh, I want to I want to say something because we've got a lady back here, uh, and I'm going to get to the veterans here real quick. Okay, back here in the back, she could she could is Linda Lou Freeman. Now I just mentioned some stand up Linda. I just mentioned the Judge Russell. Listen to put this together. Judge Russell's decision is a precedent setting decision. Do you know what that means? Everybody in the United States started calling my attorney that's working on this same kind of claim. And they wanted to see what happened. Remember Benny? Remember that guy by the name of Sean Nelson? He won this case. I'm not the attorney. He won it. I handed, I did the administrative part, then he took it into front of in front of Judge Thomas Russell. With Monica and me helping. Because I want to tell you, it's all we can do to keep up. When the judge ruled, the judge rule said, you ignored the evidence in the man's administrative file. Now, how many are in the left in the room has ever heard a claim come in and they ignored your evidence? Stan, you ever had that happen? There you go. One of my co-workers in the 720 building. So when I put all of you together, in Paducah, it's bad enough, but you can imagine what happened at Rocky Flats. So I'm seeing this and realizing that when they're issuing decisions, they're leaving out your facts. So what you do, you have to be ready on top of this because we found out that you can't even appeal a case if they've inserted an error, a material error, into your file. So guess what I do? I just tell them, no more material errors. You're not going to deny our claims. So what we're doing is a legal strategy that the attorneys here that I know say, well, hell, you always want to be an attorney anyway. Well, not really, Merritt, I didn't believe it. But if you push me in and you do what you did to my lungs, I'm not your buddy. And all I say, you lie to me once and I've never had a cigarette in my mouth and I've got nodules in my lungs, somebody's gonna pay. Especially when you've got beryllium in the 720 building killing all my coworkers. With that said, Linda Lou has got the next case that I can't tell her about, but she is a fighter, and if you don't believe it, she walks into the resource center over there one day, and as one of them said, I don't believe I know you. What did you say, Linda? I said, I can't believe that you're standing there lying to me, to my face, and you don't know me. I said, Joyce, you've known me all my life, and I've known you all your life. They were related. Her, her. Well, let me tell you, if you did me a favor, don't say any more because I got to cut you off. If you really want to be there, you want to hear what she said, we have to shut the camera. She's just being polite, okay? And so she looked her right in the eye and I about passed out because I know her. Her husband is working at, at, was working at the plant. It's Brenda Thompson. We don't have to hide it. Brenda sat right there and said to Linda, I don't think we've met. And when she got done with her, I said, dang, Brenda, you shouldn't have pulled that one on her. So anyway, nothing but honesty, truth and honesty and integrity, and she pulled it. Now, because she does that, 
Her claim was then filed and de denied. And her, three times. Three times. And her dad has all the criteria of chronic beryllium disease. And it's in front of the court right now, waiting on a precedent. And that's what just happened on Monday night. When I stood up and said, and this is why they didn't want me to speak, Judge Russell had just, and I gave Bill Bartle and all of them a copy of it. So I said, here's what I want to tell you. Well, finally, Bob Leeper said, well, that sounds like great, great news. No kidding. It's great news in Tennessee for the second case, too. It benefits every one of you. But they don't have to pay the Kentucky claimants, they think, like identical claims in Illinois or in, in Tennessee. And Judge Russell is in front of him now. I'm holding public meetings. This is going out. I don't put stuff out. I don't call Judge Russell. I can't. But don't think for a minute somebody in, that has been in this room today will be saying, Judge, well, remember Bill Gray? Bill only came in probably in a barbecue. But anyway, I'm proud that he showed up. So what we're dealing with here, I want to turn and focus because I think I've covered everybody except merit and our military leaders. Okay? Our military, not leaders, but our veterans. Mike, you're willing to, you, you want to listen to this. And Mike Driver, as I said, we graduated together. We're of members of the NWA, right Mike? We don't fly for any of them. We don't care what they, whether they like us or not. We're not running a popularity contest, are we, Mike? We're collecting McConnell's evidence right here. So Mitch, show up and we'll ask you. He won't show up because he's afraid somebody probably would hurt him. And I said hurt. Uh, now wait a minute, hold now on. they said you can't do that. Okay, you can't win Hey, We've got our, I know, there's a lot of people that would like that, but, but we, he's already burned his bridge. And he's burning it for Trump if Trump doesn't get rid of him. But we don't care if Trump does it. That's his problem. But I will tell you, Donald Trump has done more than anybody's done. But we're going to ask him to do more because he got my emails. I uploaded to America Great before he became president. He thanked me for telling him about this in a receipt. So I'm going to tell you, before those thank you notes came in, he didn't. I already told him, one, you'll never do anything if you got McConnell here over your head. So just remember that. Don't blame him for everything. 